Greetings and welcome to Conversations With. I'm your host, H. Lee Tony, Executive Director of the Carrie P. Meek Entrepreneurial Education Center of Miami Dade College. I'm really looking forward to today's show because we're talking to a woman who goes against the grain. She's the <laughs> principal partner of Messam Construction. So yes. we have a woman who's in a traditionally male dominated field. So uh, Angela, I am so excited to have you on the show today. There's a lot of ground to cover, a lot I want to ask you about how you arrive to be at the head of a growing construction firm. So welcome to Conversations With. Thank you, Lee. Good. Tell Thank me a little about here. your background. This show is designed to, a. am going to introduce this week what I'm going to call the shotgun round. So I'm going to ask you questions that I think our students are very interested in because a lot of time entrepreneurship is a mystery to them. So mm. did you know in college, did you know in high school that you were going to be an entrepreneur? Well, I, I would like to go back further than that. Mm. As a child growing up in Madison, Florida, that big town in North Florida, <laughs> um, Essentially, my mom uh, worked at a poultry plant for over 30 years. And just seeing her day in, day out, um, and her commitment to her job, working for someone else, I said, there has to be a different way um, to do this in life. And so uh, I went forward and went to Florida State, gained my education in business, and learned a lot of core fundamental principles there at Florida State. And on from there, uh, I matriculated and graduated, and then I went on to work for a major Fortune 500 company called American Management Systems, learning more about business, uh, implementing management information systems across the country in Puerto Rico as well. And from there, I saw the inner workings of corporate America. And taking it from that point, mm -hmm. um, I went on and I said, well, you know, this is good, but I know there's even better than that. And from there, I looked at a business model and I said, oh, I can do this. And I started investing into real estate and taking it from there. Um, we decided to expand our businesses from that point. So since you know from er the, your earliest years that there had to be a different model than going to work for someone else. Although I'm sure that time working in corporate America served you well, but what I'm asking, do you think you may have arrived at becoming an entrepreneurship earlier? Had you been introduced to it, say in high school or in college? Um, I think I probably would not have mm -hmm. for the simple reason that I believe to become an entrepreneur, there are some core fundamentals that you need and sometimes experience is the best teacher. Sure. And I gained so much experience uh, being exposed to my mom, my family and their core values, as well as uh, the fundamentals of working for corporate America and how to do things the right way and not just being a business owner, mm -hmm. doing it the right way, avoiding pitfalls early, um, and, and making certain that I don't make costly mistakes as an entrepreneur. So how did your experience in corporate America, you, the things you learned is from your family, how did it help you? How did you decide, okay, I'm going to be an entrepreneur now? Did it take a lot of money? Well, no, it did not take a lot of money. It just took a lot of commitment and effort mm -hmm. and focus, okay? Um, I just basically had to make up my mind what I wanted to do, develop a product, and say, hey, I can sell this. People will buy this. So a lot of people who are entrepreneurs don't define their product prior to getting involved into a business. Once when you define your product and know and believe in it, it takes off from there. You own a construction company now. Was that your first business? No, actually, it was not. Uh, our very first business, uh, me and my partner, was a pack and ship company. Hmm. That was my very first business. Uh, once when we started to pursue uh, business as an entrepreneur, um, it did not fail. We actually ended up selling it because biz it wasn't as profitable as we thought, mm -hmm. and uh, we what there were some market changings um, in which. FedEx, I believe, bought Mailbox, et cetera, and a lot of those smaller 
type uh, shipping companies. And we said, wow, you know, I don't know if this is what we're really ready for. So your first foray into entrepreneurship was a franchise? No, it was an independent pack and ship oh, uh, company nice. that yeah. we had okay. called Post All. Good. And we really enjoyed it, but we knew that we were not going to be the mom and pop uh, pack and ship company and looking to compete with a FedEx uh, as well. So we, we definitely went and followed our passion, which was more centered around real estate. So a lot of our students wonder or believe that it takes a lot of money to start a business. So when you started Post All, was it a substantial investment? And how did you find capital to launch the company? Well, actually... Um, being that it was a pre-existing business that we purchased from someone else who okay. was looking to get out of the business, uh, we were able to acquire it by having some reserves and some funds, okay. along with pooling our assets with other family members to okay. make it a success. Very good. Um, but as far as uh, our business now, um, we actually use the reserves that we had from corporate America to make it happen as well. Right. So Postal was your first company. And what did you do? Where'd you, did you go back into corporate America after that, or did you start another company? Actually, I was doing it in parallel at okay. the time. Okay. We, uh, we, we were very, we're very conservative mm -hmm. um, in the sense that we want to make certain that when we do things, we do it with a lot of thought and planning. Mm -hmm. And so the plan was to continue to work in corporate America uh, as well as get the resources and staff to help support the the franchise well not the franchise i'm sorry the the pack and ship company so we had a lot of help from family members to make it make that happen and that's a familiar pathway a lot of people mm -hmm. start companies while they're still employed with other companies and that's a very considered approach because you don't want to jump off the ship until you're sure exactly. a lot of times exactly. that the company that you're creating is going to be sustainable in right. a whole lot of ways right. so that's important and that's an important pathway uh, that we need to or we're looking to illuminate for mm -hmm. our students about ways and approaches to becoming entrepreneurs. Right. So uh, we're going to take our first break in a few moments. And when we come back, we'll continue this conversation because I, I, I think your story is a very powerful one for young people mm. about the pathway from education to corporate America and how that can lead and give you a lot of valuable experience and training when you do decide to, to open up your own venture. So we'll be right back. I hope sure. you'll stay with us as well. programs for hot jobs. Let Miami-Dade College jumpstart your career. We offer bachelor's degrees in film and TV production, electronics engineering, supervision and management, and nursing, or choose from 300 other programs. With our flexible course schedules, you can take classes during the day, evening, weekend, or online. For more info, visit mdc.edu or call 305-237-8888. Get the knowledge and training for today's in-demand jobs. Register now. Welcome back to Conversations With. I'm your host, H. Lee Tony from the Miami-Dade College Carry Meek Entrepreneurial Education Center. Angela Messam, principal partner of Messam Construction, is my guest today. And we're talking with her about her pathway to, into becoming an entrepreneur, which started when she was a child and the core values that she learned as part of her family. So before we took a break, Angela, you were telling us about your first uh, independent pack and ship company. Uh, you showed that one, and then you were looking for other opportunities and you ended up in real estate, I believe, right? Can you tell us how, what that looked like for you? Exactly. Yes, actually I was still in corporate America working my nine to five mm -hmm. and we decided to invest in real estate, me and my husband. Uh, in investing in real estate, we found that it was quite lucrative at that time in the South Florida market. And we found ourselves building up reserves at a tremendous pace, mm -hmm. unlike working in corporate America at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And so um, from that point, I left my job and my career as a management information systems um, support worker and decided to, hey, I can do this full time and make my salary in one year. 
uh, in less than 30 days by investing in real estate. And so that worked out to be great and an awesome opportunity for us. As we continued on, we had some issues uh, with our mortgage broker, on to our realtor, down to our general contractor. Mm -hmm. So we said, wow, this is not rocket science. We can probably get this done more efficiently in a better way. So um, myself uh, and my partner, which is my husband Wayne, as I mentioned before, we decided to get our mortgage broker's license. We opened up a brokerage firm. It was quite successful. And uh, we had a, a lot of uh, clients that we acquire along with selling our investment properties on into developing our real estate company in which I'm a broker, a licensed real estate broker as well. Uh, and we still have our realty firm, which is Asset Realty and Associates. Um, unfortunate due to the market boom, we closed down our mortgage company, mm -hmm. but we continue to have our realty firm and our general construction firm, which is Messam Construction. So that's what a lot of people would call vertical integration. So you just created a company that owned all of the components of the company from soup to nuts or made a Z essentially. In an essence, mm -hmm. yes, but I think one of the key important components was building a system for each of those services that we provided. And uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, you tend to think, oh, I can do it all. Mm -hmm. we, we did not have that mindset at all. Uh, we had expertise and a support system and support staff that helped to make those uh, entities successful as well. Great, so primarily now you're focused on the construction end of Metham Construction. So what is the industry like for a woman, for an African-American woman here in South Florida in 2014? Okay, <laughs> um, well, it's quite challenging at first. It was quite challenging um, and very, uh, competitive mm -hmm. uh, at, at the time. When we decided to venture into uh, construction, it was more so in an essence to support our real estate investments on the residential side of the marketplace. As we de developed our company, um, decided to launch newer products, we decided to venture over into the commercial industry. Venturing over into the commercial industry, we looked at service and governmental institutional type industries. In doing so, uh, it's very competitive for women and just um, small businesses in general in that marketplace. So um, we just took it on and said, hey, we can do this. Mm -hmm. And we had a number of setbacks, but we stayed with it. Um, as far as the market, uh, when, when it went down, we had a downturn in the market. That was one of the times when we really was just getting into the marketplace. So it was quite challenging, I would add. Um, but at the same time, we were quite fortunate because we were sp uh, persistent, specific in our product and our services. And uh, we just went on. As far as a woman in this industry, there's not necessarily um, uh, people who respect the fact that you're a woman in construction doing what I do, but once when you uh, define yourself as a person who understands the marketplace, from there I, I haven't had any issues. Very good. So knowledge trumps everything, right? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we can do it all as right. women. <laughs> and what do you think were the keys to successfully navigating the downturn of the market and being able to come out on the other side? A lot of companies didn't make it. So what do you think were key to, to the way that Messam Construction was able to survive that? Well, the, the keys I would say is um, one of our, let me back up for a moment, because one of our core values at Messam Construction is that we believe in Jesus Christ. You know, we don't force that on anyone else, but having faith mm -hmm. in that uh, line of, of, of religion, um, it pulled us through. We had some very tough and difficult times, but you know, having the faith and believing that we could do all things um, with our Savior, mm -hmm. that was the key foundation that we went off of. On top of that, um, we were persistent, focus 
we had systems in place. And I think that's the problem with a lot of small businesses. You don't have processes and systems in place to get, get your goals accomplished. And we stuck with that and we were tenacious and uh, we, we were fortunate enough to weather the storm and move on into larger projects. So what did your residential projects look like initially? Were they in subdivisions? Were they custom homes for private buyers? What was the mix of the types of projects you were doing in the residential space? Okay, um, well the residential space, um, we essentially did um, single family homes, okay. um, fix them, repair them, um, converted condos, type work. Um, and from there we went into commercial construction um, interior build outs sort of office spaces. Great. So, um, and that was one of our first um, projects into commercial construction. You mentioned being a part of uh, uh, programs that are designed to help grow businesses locally. Mm -hmm. When we come back from, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about that because I know you did a special project uh, that Miami Dade College is would be very interested in. I want to talk to you about your experience with that. So Definitely. please stay with us. We're here with Angela Messam from Messam Construction, and we'll look forward to talking to you when we come back in a few moments. Cool programs for hot jobs. Let Miami-Dade College jumpstart your career. We offer bachelor's degrees in physician assistant studies, biological sciences, education, and public safety management. Or choose from 300 other programs. With our flexible course schedules, you can take classes during the day, evening, weekend, or online. For more info, visit mdc.edu or call 305-237-8888. Get the knowledge and training for today's in-demand jobs. Register now. Welcome back to Conversations With. I'm your host, H. Lee Tony, and my guest today is Angela Messam of Messam Construction. Angela, construction, you know, you can't get a, a better industry for being able to point to your work. So mm -hmm. are, are there projects here in South Florida that you've worked on that your company has managed that we would be familiar with? Oh, of course. There are several projects in which we've embarked upon. Uh, one of our premier projects that, that we're so proud of was a partnership collaboration with Sulfa Construction for the Miami-Dade uh, Wolfson Center um, Student Union mm, uh, Center, wonderful. Life Services Center. And we were quite excited about that particular project because this college actually implemented um, SB, SLBE goals uh, with the project. And we were one of the minority firms that participated. We learned a lot during that project. In addition to that, um, it really gave us a lot of exposure in uh, the commercial construction arena. Let's, let's back up. Let's talk about SLBE because that's an important component uh, of, of the ways in which companies can get work. SLBE means, what does it stand for? Um, uh, small local business enterprise. Good. And yes. that's, a, that's a, an approach to um, working with a variety of vendors. Uh, what? Actually, what How it is, it's a small business initiative here at Miami-Dade College that was implemented by the Small Business Development Department, Mr. Sheldon Edwards. And it was just formulated, I believe, uh, back in 2010, forgive me if I'm wrong. Sure, sure. But at any rate, we were one of the applicants that applied and we were certified as an SLBE firm. And in doing so, it gives you the ability to compete for work here at Miami-Dade College um, as a, a small local firm, because a lot of times there's a, a complex in, in uh, getting business as a small business. And this particular program afforded us the opportunity to partner with one of the larger firms here in the local area and be a part of a multi-million dollar project. Um, actually, I believe the budget for that project was well over uh, $26, 27000000 million. 
Um, on our own, I would say as a small business, we would have never been afforded that opportunity. But through collaboration and the partnership with Self Construction and the support of the program uh, here at Miami-Dade College SLBE program, we were able to be an instrumental uh, part of the construction management team for that particular project. And by being involved in the construction management team of a project like that, that means what specifically? What type of roles did you play? Construction management means that we are a part of the construction from the very beginning on to the end and the maintenance of the project. So we were able to be a part of the team that coordinated with the owner, the architect, and work as the contractor of record for that particular project, along, uh, par along with the partnership of self construction. And how does a program like that help you as you think about the expansion and growth of your company? I mean, a lot of companies talk, uh, there's a lot of these types of programs um, locally and nationally, mm -hmm. and you say it was an extremely good thing for your company. You would have never been able to do it uh, without that type of a partnership. How does that set you up for the future? Well, the way that sets us up for the future is, um, it, like I said, it afforded us the opportunity to be a part of a $27 million project. Normally, we wouldn't have had the capacity or the bonding to be a part of a project of that statue. And uh, it, in, we integrated our staff uh, with the larger company staff to be a part of that project on the management side in which we oversaw the inner workings of assembling that particular project. And we not only do that, um, you mentioned the projects we've been involved with, we don't only do that with self construction. We work with other larger firms as well. Um, right now, we're working uh, with another firm at the Broward County Airport um, yes. doing a similar type uh, arrangement, which is over a $100 million type project. Huh. In addition to that, we're working at the Broward County Courthouse, We've just been uh, awarded a project, uh, actually two projects with Miami-Dade schools um, in which they're building two brand new schools in which we're partnered with a larger firm as well. Excellent. So, you know, we don't take it for granted that um, the program was very instrumental in our company having the opportunity to be a part of those type projects and, and agreements. Um, and we really... Uh, gain a lot of experience as a small business um, by doing that because like I said before otherwise we would never have the opportunity to be at the table um, outside of being what we call a subcontractor um, doing the hammers and the nails portion of the project but our focus as a business is centered around being a construction manager in which we provide the professional services associated with assembling these type major major type projects Great. so and we pride ourselves in doing so well that's excellent projects in Dade projects in Broward the, the municipal governments airports school systems yes. is this the growth plan that you're looking for and um, how do how do you staff up for these types of, of projects well we have talent uh, talented professionals associated with our firm, which are licensed um, general contractors, um, what we call LEED APs, which is a term we use in sustainable building of uh, environmentally That's friendly important. type yes. projects, yes. as well as myself and my partner, we're LEED uh, accredited professionals. Excellent. Along with um, individuals that has graduated from major universities with the construction management degrees. So we have a wealth of experience associated with our firm that we as a partner bring to the table um, to really make a difference on the project as a, a small business providing professional services. And again, even though we're a small business, we don't wear that as a hat to say, we are a small business, you need to have us on your team. No, we come to the table to make a difference for the owner, the architect, and the contractor that we're partnered with, as well as our staff, because we want our staff, our partners to grow and sustain themselves 
and make certain that what they're venturing into is profitable as well and worth their time in doing business with Metzen Construction. So it's about the value. Oh, definitely. Good. Definitely. Well, Angela, I've enjoyed talking with you today. I think our students are going to, and our audience in general, is going to get a lot from this conversation. Uh, just in terms of where the entrepreneurial, the seeds of entrepreneurialism start and the importance of positioning your company. And you, you spoke a lot about core values. And we'll have to have you back at some point because that, at the end of the day, yes. is what helps determine the type of company you're going to be and the type of opportunities you're going to have. So thank you very much for you're your welcome. time. I enjoyed having you on Conversations With. I hope you enjoyed our conversation today and we'll can count on you to continue to watch and support the show. Thank you very much and please enjoy your day. <laughs>